The sine function varies from negative 1 to 1, so in order to satisfy the given equation, we must have sine of m times x is equal to 1 and sine of nx is equal to 1. According to our unit circle, sine is 1 when the angle is pi over 2 or some multiple of 2 pi plus pi over 2. We can write this as mx is pi over 2 plus 2 times a times pi, where a is an integer, and n times x is pi over 2 plus 2b pi. Let's take the ratio of mx to nx to cancel out the x. Let's cancel the pi's and multiply the numerator and denominator by 2. Notice that m over n gives us a fraction where the numerator and the denominator are both odd. This means whatever power of 2 that m has in its prime factorization is going to be entirely canceled by the 2's in the prime factorization of n in the denominator. This means that the powers of 2 in the prime factorizations of m and n have the same exponent. Let's let the remaining factors, the odd factors, be p and q for m and n. So when we take the ratio of m over n, we get p over q. Let's multiply by the denominators. In mod 4, we have p is equivalent to q. Since p and q are odd, p and q are either both equivalent to 1 or both equivalent to 3 in mod 4. So now we're looking to choose our two numbers, m and n, such that they have the same power of 2 in their prime factorization, and then the remain odd, remaining odd factors are both equivalent to either 1 or 3 in mod 4, and we're choosing them from uh, the numbers 1 to 30. Let's divide up our even numbers into the powers of 2 in their prime factorization. Let's combine these powers of 2 with the odd primes that give us 1 and 3 in mod 4. Here are the odd numbers divided up into their mod 4 equivalents. We have 8 that are equivalent to 1 in mod 4 and 7 that are equivalent to 3. This means that we can choose 2 from the set to be m and n such that our equation is satisfied. Likewise, over here we can choose 2 out of these 7 numbers to be um, m and n. These are the available numbers that have 2 to the first power in their prime factorization, and then we split them up into um, what their odd primes are equivalent to in mod 4. 4 of them are equivalent to 1 in mod 3, and 4 are equivalent to 3. We split up the multiples of 4. m and n must be distinct, so we can't choose two distinct numbers from these three remaining sets. Let's add up the total number of ways of choosing m and n. We can choose two numbers from our first set, and so on. Adding these quantities, we get 63, our answer.